Greetings, viewers, and thanks for joining me today. Going to do a little bit more on the green third gen. Going to focus on the brake upgrades today. Uh, easy enough to upgrade the front. It's just those power stop pads and rotors. I'll go over the break-in procedure for the upgraded pads. While I'm in the back, though, I'm going to completely rebuild the rear brakes. I got all the stuff to do, the brakes, um, the new adjusters, everything new. When you order this kit from Power Stop, comes with all that stuff. So going to completely redo that. I got that kit from Dorman on the e-brake rebuild. So I'm going to go under there and rebuild the emergency brake. It's a really nice kit. Dorman stuff is generally really nice. It does have the little nylon guides, or uh, washers rather, that go on the pivot point. The pivot point, and uh, comes with the grease to lube it up and everything. So hopefully it won't uh, get all corroded up and nasty. And I'll have a nice working uh, e-brake also. So I'll go and uh, show you the new brakes as they go on. I did the power stop upgrade on my Lexus, and I just could not be happier. Uh, it's amazing. The brakes are just so good on it now. They have that coating on them that keeps the part where the pad doesn't rub from turning yucky. And so far, I've been driving this in the winter. I know I should have pulled those stickers off, but I didn't. Uh, but yeah, no corrosion on there. So, so far, so good on that. I got the same coating on my rotors on the front for the Forerunner. Doing the drilled and slotted instead of the Tundra brake upgrade. So I went with Power Stop because I'm super impressed. I got the pads that are for heavy loads and towing. Even though I don't tow with it, I plan on having it loaded down. I want the best brake I can get for it. They actually have one higher up, but I didn't think it was necessary. But anyway, this one I got uh, has to go through like a break-in period of heat and cool break-in period real quick. It only takes a minute might show you that or at least tell you about it more in depth so gonna dive into this gonna see what i think keeping the drums in the rear using the power stop stuff in the back again really impressed can't wait for my tundra to need brakes so i can do it so i'm gonna tear into this hit on the high points i'll be back and just a quick answer to a couple of people who asked uh, when I said these are your wires and I'll tie into that switch for the key thing, those wires all come up here and down and under the headliner over here. I get my color selections from my motor so I know what color wires I need to look for and same thing for that switch I took out. When I tie in, I'll tie in over on to the wire harness inside up here. I will put them on this side, not the same side as the power port. I know I'm in the wrong truck, but same thing. I will run a hot wire over and around and down to that port, but I don't want to have to run all the wires across and over for my switches and back and uh, et cetera. So, but when I get to it, I'll tie in up here at the harness. I'm not going to tie in to the door and then try to fish wires through the harness. I wasn't clear on that, and I had a couple people ask, so I hope that clarifies that, and I will get to that in the near future. Okay, high points on a front brake job. Two bolts in the back to take your caliper out. One there, one right there. Caliper raise up gently so you don't mess up your hard line. Rotor slides right off. Just slide the new rotor on. Put the new pads on. Of course, spread the pads with the old rotor and stuff on there before you put your new pads in. There comes lube with these. And even though there really isn't much to lube on these, I like to lightly grease these pins. Keeps them from rusting and they slide. I polished them up a little on my wire wheel first. Don't forget to put this in, use your new wire. Not much else to that. Um, don't forget to pump the brake at least once before you take off. And I'll show you real quick on these extra pads, what needs done, extra good pads. You go from 40 to 10 hard brake real quick, five times, 
and then go from 35 to 5, moderately braking 5 times, and then drive slowly to cool your brakes down for at least 5 minutes. So it comes with the process there, pretty easy. I'm not going to have a camera running while I'm doing that, but I can do it right out here on my road. Not going to be a problem. So that's what you got to do once those are on. So that's the front brakes. Uh, cut and dry. Come to the rear here in a minute. So after you get that other one out on the other side, this little spring down here is the next one to come loose. Nothing on that tool to grab that. You just kind of grab it with a pair of pliers or vice grips and pull it off. That'll release your shoes. A little needle nose pair of vice grips is good for this. <laughs> That's going to make a fool out of me here. Let me get a better spot. Let me grab that in a better place. There we go. So that's kind of a bear. Grab it in a good spot. And uh, you can get that off of there. Now I'm not going to go chase it down just yet. But now you can get this shoe out. And that shoe out. Uh, up over the top. Take it out from the bottom. Undo your e-brake. And now we've only taken the pins and springs out of here and the spring off of the bottom you can lay this on the ground just like this and rebuild it with all your new parts which is what i'm going to do here in just a minute i'm also going to redo that emergency brake so i think i'm going to try to do this all at once and uh, show it and hit all the high points you know i'm going to use that lube that's left over from the front to hit these little pads where the uh, brake shoes slide. So I'm going to take these two bolts off first and get this e-brake portion off. I showed you earlier the kit and I'm going to match it up and build it and put it back in. So hold on. Hey, there's a, a cotter key right here. Uh, you can see in there, I should maybe get some better light. But anyway, I'm going to take that out. And that's going to release this piece that has my cable held here. And then I'll unbolt it. Ah, got caught there, sorry. Unbolt it from this back side, pull it out, and I'll show you what I'm going to do to get it rebuilt. Okay, so I got that cutter pin out of, whoo, where am I? Out of this little hole right here. And got the cable loose. The little piece that's on the end of the cable I'm probably going to have to keep. I'm retaining all the little pieces till I get it go back together just in case I need them. Okay, so those two bolts come out. This whole piece comes out. And you can see here, hang on just a second, I got my camera messed up. There we go, sorry, I got fat fingers and touch buttons. Take those two bolts out. This is what was hanging out on the inside, that little piece with the clip. There's the new piece that comes in the kit. Right there. That's your new piece. Nice. There's what happens to them. They get all corroded up right there, and then they can't uh, swivel anymore. Can't pull the little cable. That was right here. I went on that and ran over to this. So the new kit comes with everything comes with lube, it comes with nylon bushings that go in there. And if you've got a third gen that the brake doesn't work, this kit's less than $30 on Rock Auto. And it's super easy to rebuild while you're doing your back brake. So let me put another bell crank assembly together like this one and move on. All right, now I put this one together. I put with the uh, locking part of the little pin clamp down. So if it ever does work loose, because it goes in kind of like that. So if it ever does work loose, it uh, may not come out. You put these little clamps over that pin and then you smush the ends together. They're supposed to smush kind of regular. Mine smushed kind of one all the way and the other would not, but it's on there real good and I can't get it back out. Getting those little nylon bushings in there isn't terrible. I used a pick uh, to help me. If you don't have a good set of picks, I highly recommend you get a good set of picks or a couple cheap sets of picks. I use them all the time. 
Anyway, this comes with the new springs that I had to take off that were crusty and rusty and there, there they are. And uh, plenty of lubricant. I'm going to lube the crap out of this thing at all angles before I put that boot back on. Um, should have probably slid the boot on already, but I can get it on over all of this. It'd probably be easier to put it on and slide it up here first, but I didn't, so I'm going to have to get it around that edge. I'm going to put my adjusting nut in. We'll see how difficult this is to duplicate from the other side. Give me just a minute. Okay, fully assembled, just like the other side. Really simple. Got that boot on there really easy. On the new one, I caked it with grease inside. I shoved it in all around all these surfaces and just kind of packed it full. It gives you plenty. I can't see where that could ever hurt, but I think maybe after I get it put in there, I might grease it a little more, but that may be overkill. So I'm going to put that in, put the cable on. It gives you every single piece new. Nothing needs to be reused, so that's good. Now let's get this rear brake put together, go out and test drive this. Okay, well, if you get uh, some shoes, <laughs> they don't come with that. So I just showed you how to drive that out for no reason, because these come with it. So kudos again to these power stop stuff. I know I've been uh, being pretty excited about it, but dang, that's nice. Usually you don't get that. So rambling. As you're rebuilding, use your other one for a reference. Put your new guide in. Put your new spring in. Make sure it's going the same way. And the hooky parts go in the same way as it is on the other spring you got a little tab on this that has to be up also the little spring that goes in the back on this side to hold your e-brake adjuster it comes with that too comes with everything you need you want to slip that in there i think i'm going to reuse the toyota piece here for the adjuster just because it seems to be a little more heavy duty but then again, I could be wrong there. Uh, they actually both seem to be a pretty decent quality and identical. So I'm just going to use the new stuff all around here. We'll see how this turns out. But so far, it's looking good. I uh, hope not to go on too long and show how to adjust that e-brake cable. And then uh, after this is together, I think we should be done. Again, like I say, this rebuild kit is super nice. Come with the pen. Your two brake pieces will only kind of fit one way. It's a nice thing about a lot of pieces on cars. They'll only go back together one way. You had to put it back in with these pins and smush them together. Then the spring that goes in the back here. Oops, goes in the back there and hooks to this right here. I'm going to hook that up real quick and put these shoes together. Show you how to put them back in. We'll be done. I keep saying that. Okay, I jump ahead. Sometimes that little tab goes in that hole. So I just took the spring back off, raised this up, put that in, set it back together. Now this spring goes in that side and that side. And you kind of can put your adjuster together. Come on, baby. Work with me here. All right. Then got my adjuster together. Slide your little piece back up. And now see, we're all put back together just like it came apart off of there. Once it goes back up on there, this new spring is blue that you'll put on the bottom. And then it's got these, the cup and the springs that hold the shoe in place. Don't forget, I want to lube those little pad spots there. But otherwise, it's reassembled back together. And I'll show you how to slide it on there here in just a sec. Okay, now... Like I said, you put the yellow spring on, you put it all together, just like this. So, hope you can see all that. Just like this, just like it came apart. You do that on the floor, and you take it behind the hub. You want to get behind your piece down here, on the bottom, where your spring will go. And then... Got to get your pads lined up with your wheel cylinder. So give me just a minute here. Gonna try and do it while you're watching. Oh, I was caught there. Okay. So there's one. Whoop. Kind of fussy, but can be done. 
with patience and understanding. Now I might have to push these together just a little. Nope, got it. Aw, oh, shit. Got it. <laughs> All right, this may not be worth watching here, but I'll give it one more try. It's easier than I'm making it look. There, now I got both of my wheel cylinders in. I got that shoe under. I got that shoe under. Oh, nope, not all the way. Okay, now I'll center these, raise them up where they go all the way and put these, the pins and springs back in here and put my blue one on the bottom. So I had to fumble around with that for a minute, but that's the gist of it. And then I'll show you how to adjust them here. It gives you long pins and short pins. The pins that you put in here, put your first little cup on and quarter turn it. Grab you a new spring and a cup. Put your cup like straight up and down so you know where it's at with your pin. Push your spring on, hold your pin from the back. Push down and turn. That'll hold your pads in place. I'll get this blue one on the bottom and we'll adjust accordingly. And with the little blue spring on, use my needle nose vice grips again. Don't forget to put your cable back in and under its little guide there at the bottom. And then it's gonna be time now to get the drum on. I've got it turned all the way in for maximum adjustment later. I'm gonna put the drum on. If it's loose, I'll show you how to adjust it. If it's nice and tight, we'll have to drive it first. You may, take, uh, you may have to smack the shoes around just a little bit to get that to go in. Once you get it on there and slide on and off pretty easy, you can reach the adjuster from the back side. It always goes up. You can do it from in here now. I don't want it to be super tight, but I'm gonna give it a few here to bring everything up to tight. You can see them inside the shoe. What you want when this shoe or when this drum goes on, see the play in there? You got to get that out. But when this uh, drum goes on, basically what you want it to be nice and snug, not too tight, but not too loose. So once you beat your shoes around, you kind of get a nice even reveal around the edge. Then you can start adjusting them out a little bit. If your drum slides on real super easy, and like that's too loose. So I'm going to adjust that up a little bit until this drum is tight. Now you know how to rebuild your e-brake and do the rear drums. Uh, some people, like I say, will do rear discs and a Tundra upgrade. I'm probably better. That's probably better. But that's not what I did. So thanks for watching. Uh, go on way too long. Uh, like and subscribe if you want. And uh, give me comments. Anything you'd like to see. If I'm not doing things right, tell me about it. But I think I'm doing it pretty right. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. Appreciate it. Have a great day.